All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be opening up some mail and I'm not gonna show you the front of these, but I got one, one package here, another thicker package here, and a slightly smaller package here. So I will be opening these off, um, sort of off camera, just because I don't know what, uh, you know, pamphlets or anything they might have inside here. But I'm gonna be revealing to you guys for the first time what I have decided to do, I'm just kind of slicing these off here. What I have decided to do with Pokemon 151. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, I have, as you can see, we're, we're cutting, we are cutting. I have uh, alluded to a sort of plan that I have for 151. What have I decided to do? Well, as you can tell from the title of this video, here's the box, okay. I have decided to start buying graded cards. Which company did I go with? Well, I'm not sure if I will end up revealing that in the video or not, so we'll keep it a mystery for now. What am I going for? What grades am I looking for? Am I going for Japanese? Am I going for English? Well, you're going to find out. Okay, so we got we got two people here that have them in extra boxes, so we can safely probably open these up. Um, let's do the big one first. We'll save the one in the single envelope for last, because that's kind of a big one. So yes, I have decided to get into the world of graded cards, and I think this is really going to kickstart my desire to send cards in and get them graded. I wanted to kind of just pick some up uh, from other sellers because, well, well, you'll see why. Let's, let's not reveal quite yet. We're going to kind of slip this out. You might, if you're keen on the way slabs look, you might already be able to tell what company I went with here. So let's keep these face down. And as you can also tell, I did indeed go with Japanese cards. Nice packaging here from the seller. And I'm gonna get a, kinda get into the, the mentality behind this, what my thoughts are in just a moment here. Once we get this opened up and we'll kinda take a look at the cards. Now, this is a big moment for me. This is the first time I ever bought slabs on my own. All right, so if you're familiar with grading, you know that this is a CGC slab. You can see from the back here they got their logo and you can also probably notice something else about these cards. They're Japanese. What do you say we flip them over and to check out our first card? We got the Machoke in a pristine 10. Yes. So as you can tell it is not Master Ball. These are actually the Pokeballs and you might be like oh no Pokeballs. You know they have those print lines. Yes they do and as you can see Every single 151 card will have those print lines, very faint, a little hard to see. However, both PSA and CGC don't take print lines into account entirely. I think as long as the print line is faint enough, they won't really take away any points. So how this works is CGC has upgraded their grading skill, and now they have these new slabs where when you get pristine 10, which is now their highest grade, you get this really glossy golden uh, 10, which I think looks fantastic with these Pokeball cards. So let's just kind of keep flipping through some of these and we'll talk about why I went with CGC and why I'm choosing to go with Pristine 10. We got the Abra here. These are some hefty, nice feeling cases. Um, my first time seeing the Pristine 10s in person. Like this Abra, for example. Hold on, let me, let me more closely examine this. This Abra. Wow. The print line is like almost not noticeable on this thing. It's extremely faint. I can see how they actually give this a Pristine 10 because Actually, even under close examination, I know there's a lot of glare here. I got two different lights shining on it. Um, print line is really hard to see. It's sort of, uh, it's like sort of off to the side here, but very faint, very, very faint. And some of the scratching might actually be on the plastic on the outside, like the sleeve that they keep it in. So let's talk about why I went with Japanese. I went with Japanese, first of all, because, ooh, this Scyther, awesome. You can see the print lines here. Um, really cool looking one. I went with Japanese because for one, I like the way the reverse hollows look. I love the idea of the Pokeball. I think it just looks way better than English. Um, you know, it's just more fun to open packs of Japanese and pull Pokeballs with the chance of a Master Ball. So that's it. Pretty much I went with Japanese because I just like the way the reverse looks way more than English. Why did I go for Pokeball over reverse ball? You're probably wondering. Well, cost. Honestly, the reverse balls are too expensive. Uh, War Turtle, this is one I was looking forward to seeing. Let's see the print line on here. Once again, a very another very faint print line on this. Very, very, 
very faintly over here. You can kind of see it catching the light there. Um, it's it's just one that goes vertical. So it seems like if you want to get a pristine 10, most of the time you're probably going to want one that only goes vertical and then the, the horizontal part is sort of like hidden. This is a very clean pristine 10. Love the background on this War Turtle. I want a Pokeball because of cost. Master Ball cards are like way more expensive than the Pokeballs. Obviously, Master Ball cards don't have the print lines. But Pokeball, because they're more common, they're way cheaper. So I've been picking these up for like bottom of the market prices. Some of these I've got for like 25 bucks, which if you factor in the cost of getting these Pokeballs, you know, a dollar, two or three or four or five, depending on what card it is. And then if you factor in the cost to get graded at CGC for me would be 12, maybe 13, $14 with tax or whatever other fees they're going to charge to get a card graded. So by the, by the end of the day, you're pretty much paying like eight to $10 to guarantee a pristine 10 for a lot of these because most of these are like between 25 30 maybe 35 at the absolute most 40 for most of the the pristine 10s on like your normal pokemon i actually really like the way this caterpie looks super nice so it just kind of makes sense we got a zubat you know when a zubat can look good then you know they did something right in this set with that reverse hollow print line here um I actually don't see it. There are reports of some people that get the Pokeball cards without print lines. Okay, I think I kind of see it. Man, it is faint. Super duper faint. Not easy to see. This is a nice pristine 10 Zubat. Okay, I see a horizontal one that goes across. Very, very faint. Uh, not easy to pick up on the camera. So yeah, I, I picked these all up from the same seller. I sent offers, I think, or I, they sent me offers on some of these. Pretty much what I do is I watch the ones that I want, and then I wait and see if the seller sends me an offer, and sure enough, most of them do. We got an Onyx with, once again, a nearly... Hold on, I gotta examine this closely. Like, this seriously looks like there's no print line. Wow, that's really rare. Huh. Wow. This is like the first, po oh wait, hold on, I see a super duper faint one running vertical right down here. But that just shows you, like, you can get pristine 10s on these with print lines, you just gotta find the ones where it doesn't really detract from the card, because you can almost not even notice it. Alright, final one from this seller. Oh, nice, the Ivysaur. Looks so good. Uh, so my focus will be on the Pokeballs. I'm not caring about the... Like the full arts or the master balls for grading as of right now my plan is to over the course of many years as long as i stick with this to try and get a full master set of all pristine 10 pokeball graded cards with cgc now your next question is probably why did you go with cgc over psa that's a good question i'm sure you're all wondering that because psa as we all know is the definitely the leading company when it comes to prices and value but you know what i'm not buying these to flip or sell I'm, I'm buying these because i really enjoy it i'm gonna have a lot of fun trying to complete a master set but this is really really packaged well so for me keeping the cost down getting slabs that i think look beautiful i definitely prefer cgc slabs the way they look over psa i'm not a fan of the way psa cards look i will definitely grade cards with psa in the future when it makes sense okay let's not reveal okay face down perfect but from a personal collection, being able to keep the cost down, enjoy the slab, get the cards at a great price, I had to go with CGC. And a lot of times, uh, there's not too many of these graded for, in Pristine 10. So what I plan on doing is, when I open Japanese packs or buy singles, I will submit my reverse Pokeballs to CGC and try and get my own Pristine 10s. And I figured this is a great way to jumpstart my collection, get me excited, get me to look at the slabs and appreciate them and be like, is this something that I want to do? And after seeing these in person, I really think this is something that I want to pursue over the course of years. Obviously, I'm not, I can't go crazy with it. It's the time to get cards graded, the cost to get cards graded. Get those pristine 10s. Keep an eye on eBay for the, the low, cheap prices. Um, it'll take some time, but it's going to be a really fun goal. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Because we're going to be going on this journey together. You can see my returns. You can see what cards I get pristine 10s on, which ones I pick up on eBay. And it'll be super fun. All right, here we go. Oh, this is one I was so excited for. This is one that I sent an offer to the seller, um, like 20, 25 bucks cheaper than what they were asking. And I was really happy when they accepted it pretty much the same price, like in the $30 range for the other cards. And let's see for the print line here. Wow. Super faint. I don't see it yet. 
I do not see it. And this is very eye-opening for me because, okay, here it is. Really faint vertical. Don't really see the horizontal. It's like right hard for it to catch on the camera. I'm trying to see if I can get the right angle. Yeah, you can see it right there. Really faint. Hard to see. Does not detract from the card, really, unless you're really closely examining this. Aerodactyl has one of my favorite arts in the whole set, so getting this in a pristine 10 looks awesome with that gold. All right. Oh, the Jigglypuff. Nice. Do you see the print lines here? But once again, pretty faint. I think it's important, too, to go for these big ones, right? Like Jigglypuff, pretty popular character. I think the ones with the really awesome art, like Aerodactyl, also pretty important to go for. And let's see what our last one is here. Oh, the Bulbasaur. Does have a print line. Faintly see it going horizontal, a little bit vertical there. But I'll take it, right? If some people want to ignore the slabs where you can more clearly see the print lines, I'm okay with that, because that just means I'll get it cheaper. I also feel like there's a lot of security. Before we open this last one, and this is a big one here, okay? This is probably the biggest slab that I picked up. Let's kind of just spread these out and talk about why I feel secure in pristine 10s from CGC. Is it possible that CGC can go by the wayside and just disappear one day for graded cards and then everything drops to zero? Absolutely. And that's the risk that you got to be willing to take. I feel pretty confident that going forward, CGC is going to gain more ground. The slabs are amazing as people get into the hobby like me that haven't graded cards. It's not like I have a pre-existing PSA collection where I feel like I don't want CGC cards because it kind of breaks that um, consistency, right? And I think that's the leading thing with a lot of people as to why they go with CG or PSA over CGC. But if CGC sticks around, gains some ground, there's no way that pristine 10s will go down in price, right? Like these are not going to drop to 10 or $15. Like it's not going to drop below the cost that it would cost to get these graded. They're definitely going to hold their value, even though it's pretty low right now, 20, 25, 30, 35, $40 for most of these cards. I don't really see them dropping though, because chasing a pristine 10 with CGC is still a pretty low rate at getting them. Um, and if anything, it's only going to go up. Imagine if I've put together a full master set of pristine 10. That's something that not a lot of people are going to do for Pokeballs because not a lot of people are grading them. So spending the money and the time to send them in and taking that chance, not a lot of people are listing them. There's quite a few Pokeball pristine 10s where either none exist or one exists or two exist in the world as of right now, and this set's been out for months. So it's going to be a fun chase set to try and put this together, and it's going to force me to grade. And that's one of the things I'm really excited for because I've been waiting for that, that reason to actually start sending in my own cards for grading, and I think this is a great reason why. All right, here we go. Let's reveal the biggest one here, and I will say that I am confident that I got one of the best market prices for this, okay, for this card here. I sent an offer. I thought it was a low ball offer because it was definitely like the lowest out of any of the recent sold prices. In fact, there was one ending in an auction that went for uh, like $50 more than I ended up paying. So I sent the offer like an hour or two before that listing ended, and I was really hoping this seller would not notice that auction because my offer was $50 below what that card was going for at auction. So I'm like, please don't notice, please don't notice. And it seems like they did not notice because they accepted my offer, which from the looks of it, this, uh, I really don't like to say too much how much I pay for cards here, but if you, you know, if you take a look at eBay, you can kind of figure out what I might have paid for this. Uh, probably the cheapest sell on this. Uh, Potentially that has sold in this grade so far. So I'm really happy with that. All right, let's flip this over. Keep the suspense. This is a card that will not go down. I feel like this, this is something that will only go up in the future, especially because I think it looks amazing with the grade. You guys ready? Pristine 10 Pikachu. Pokeball reverse. Looks so awesome with that gold 10, considering all the golds and yellows and stuff on Pikachu. In terms of print line, I tried to pick out one that didn't have uh, too much of a prominence. And this one's nice because the horizontal print line is actually hidden directly beneath the art portrait here, where they give you that info. So it's really kind of out of the way and not super noticeable. And the vertical print line here is also very faint, very hard to see. So it's a really nice pristine 10 for Pikachu. Really happy with this. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad I picked it up when I did because it seems like if it's getting bid for $50 more than I paid for Buy It Now with the offer that I sent, uh, yeah, it's, I think I got a, a super good deal. So had to get this one before taking the risk of this going up too much because the Master Ball version is going kind of crazy. We're talking like four or $500 for the Master Ball graded in a 10. So there we have it, guys. That is the start of my journey for pristine 10s, eventually going for the full Master Set of reverse Pokeballs from Japanese 151. And uh, I hope you guys are ready for the journey. I got some stuff coming in. 
trying to keep it affordable, but you'll see what I mean when I when I get the next package in. Uh, kind of a, a nice cheap way to go for reverse Pokeballs that I want to potentially send in to get graded. And I hope you guys are ready for it. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.